Good morning. morning. Pastor JJ. Pastor Andrea. Welcome. It's good to see you this morning. We are still celebrating Andrea's ordination last Sunday. I want to say thank you so much for all of your support. So we want to talk a little bit about the tradition that the clergy women wear red shoes for our ordination service. It was started at Garrett Evangelical Seminary, one of our United Methodist seminaries. And, and we all celebrate together as clergy women by wearing red shoes for ordination service. And so we're going to be wearing red shoes today in worship. Red is a liturgical color for ordination and also represents the Holy Spirit. We want to thank our clergy brothers and um, laity that support us women in ministry and all the women too. Um, nevertheless, she persisted. Give us pure 
Good morning. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Andrea, and I'm one of the pastors here. I want to say welcome to the gathering here at First United Methodist Church of downtown Bentonville. It is, if it's your first time here, a special, special welcome to you, and we would love, love to get to know you. And the way to do that, there's a connect card in our comment section, and you fill that out, or you can visit our website later at fumcbentonville.org. And we do have a great welcome gift for you. If you have not already, go ahead and like this video, this, like this live stream, share it, tag a friend in the comment section, and we would love, we love to, um, to engage with you throughout worship. So we invite you to share your, um, your, um, your amens, your praises, whatever it is, through our comment section. Let us pray. Gracious and holy Lord, we thank you for a new day of new mercies and grace. It is our prayer on this morning, as we hear your word, as we sing together, as we gather around your Christ table to partake in Holy Communion, that you feel your love and your presence and that we leave today transformed. In Christ we pray, amen.
like to pray, and we invite you to pray with us this morning. Holy God, we give you thanks. Thanks once again to join together in worship. And we can join together near and far, gathering together with people not just in northwest Arkansas, but friends and family and, and just passers-by from all over the country and world. And God, we pray for this earth right now. We pray for healing for all of creation. We pray for the pandemic and all those who are doing all they can to bring about its resolution, to bring healing to the sick, to find a cure and a way forward. God, we pray for our school teachers. We pray for uh, our uh, black brothers and sisters. We pray for so many this day and ask that you be with us here and now that you would fill this room that you would fill JJ that you would fill each and every one of us who participate whether watching or right here on this stage with your holy presence that we would know and experience your grace and love today and carry that forward into all the world we pray these things in your son's most precious and holy holy name Jesus the Christ Amen. Good morning. I'm Reverend JJ Whitney. Want to welcome you as well to this worship service this morning. We're going to kick off our sermon series for the month of September, Heaven on Earth, and focusing on the Lord's Prayer and the vision that God is casting through that prayer. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Luke's Gospel, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 4. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, how will be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. To be a Christian without prayer is no more possible than to be alive without breathing. So proclaimed the great reformer Martin Luther. Prayer should come as easily as our own breath, as effortlessly as waking up in the morning or going to sleep at night. Yet there have been many times in my own life when I can relate to the disciples who say to Jesus, Lord, teach us to pray. Luke's gospel shows Jesus in prayer all over the place. At important moments like being tempted at the beginning of his ministry or in the Garden of Gethsemane when he asked God to take this cup from him. We find Jesus modeling a life of prayer before the disciples. So this request on how to pray is a disciple's desire to pray like the pro does. And what unfolds is what we have come to call the Lord's Prayer, the template for speaking to God and knowing how it should be done. Jesus says, when you pray, say, Father, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us and do not bring us to the time of trial. It is simple, short, comforting, personal, and visionary, all in a few lines. Jesus begins this prayer with Father, a very personal way of knowing God and understanding the very nature of the divine. God is like a parent to us, loving us, watching over us, teaching us, providing for us. Yet Jesus continues to say, hallowed be thy name, as a reminder that the creator of the universe, the one and the only God, is holy. Jesus invites us to begin our prayers by both knowing the incredible task of praying to an all-powerful God, but also helps us understand how personal that relationship is. The next line of the prayer, your kingdom come, 
opens us to this understanding that God's kingdom has not quite been fulfilled on earth. And with the knowledge that Jesus is the one who will come to usher in the kingdom. The petitions of the prayer that follow give us a glimpse of kingdom living. Give us each day our daily bread. This request of God isn't personal, it's communal. Not give me, but give us our daily bread. And this request isn't for gluttony, it's not for an abundance of food. It asks that we be given just what we need to live on earth, no more, no less. Daily bread for the entire community. We pray that all will be fed. We move to the next portion of the prayer when Jesus invites us to ask God for forgiveness of sins just as we offer that same forgiveness to those who have wronged us. Again, this is kingdom vision that Jesus offers. It reminds us that God's mercies are available to us when we sin, literally, when we miss the mark of what Jesus taught us in the Sermon on the Mount. Second, it invites us to model our mercies to each other after the way that God has shown mercy to us. And finally, this prayer asks for protection. Do not bring us to the time of trial. On the human journey, we're often brought to this crossroads between choosing evil or choosing good. And again, Jesus orients us to the ways of God in this prayer, that we are able to ask God for help to avoid the pitfalls that lead to our undoing. This prayer request reminds us to stay on the path that God has outlined for us, and God can help us do it. So the Lord's Prayer is based on three petitions that every human being has, food, forgiveness, and deliverance. We stand in need of daily sustenance, daily grace, because we fail to live up to all God desires of us, daily deliverance from the trials that threaten to undo us, and lead us far from God. And we don't need these things alone. We stand together in our need. There's a reason why Jesus spoke the Lord's Prayer in the plural, not asking these things of God in the singular. Give us, forgive us, deliver us. True prayer cannot be separated from the life of the community. We have focus on a life of prayer, as a solitary thing, something that happens in our personal relationship with God. But when the disciples ask Jesus for some advice on how to pray, he steers them in direction of community. Now, people have said to me over the years that you don't need to go to church to be a Christian. That you can have just as good a relationship with God out in the natural world as you can inside a church building. And I remind them that belonging to a church means that you're a member of a community. We need to belong to a community that offers us both accountability and grace as we make our way through life. This reminds me of an exchange that's recorded in Elizabeth Gilbert's book, Eat, Pray, Love. Now, her sister told Elizabeth about a neighbor who'd been stricken with a double tragedy when both the young mother and the three-year-old son were diagnosed with cancer. When Elizabeth heard it, all she could say was, Dear God, that family needs grace. And her sister replied firmly, That family needs casseroles. And then she proceeded to mobilize the entire neighborhood to bring the family dinners. I don't know, said Elizabeth, if my sister fully recognizes that this is grace. We need a community who will bring us casseroles. And we need a community to hold a mirror up to us, to remind us of our shared values that we hold, to push us to be better. We need to pray and to worship and to sing together each week because we are in desperate need of a community who cares for us and one in, that encourage us to be all we can be as disciples of Jesus Christ. When planning worship with young people over the years, the Lord's Prayer doesn't get enough credit. We often recite it without thinking, and it seems like the one aspect of worship that you can delete if there's a lot going on. But I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, that the Lord's Prayer, this simple prayer that we all seem to know, 
holds great power in the life of a Christian. When I became a new mother, it was a difficult transition for me. You're given a lot of advice about being a parent, and you hear that it's going to bring you a lot of joy to have a baby, but no one can really prepare you for how hard it's going to be. As a new mom, I struggled with high expectations of myself, with a body that had changed, with a colicky baby, with surviving on no sleep. Looking back, I'm sure that I was suffering from postpartum depression. I just thought I needed to work harder, be better, be stronger. But operating in that darkness, I couldn't even find the words to pray. And it was portions of the Lord's Prayer that carried me along the way when I was in the midst of desperate times. When I traveled around the world and visited small churches in Peru or Bolivia or France or Spain, I felt the disorientation of being a stranger in the midst of a denomination very different than my own. And not being able to grasp that language made me feel disconnected from the people around me. But the rhythm of the Lord's Prayer was spoken every place I went. I knew what they were saying when we recited the words together. Those words connected me to a people despite the language barriers I faced. When I've gathered with United Methodists from all over the world and we couldn't agree on the next steps for our church and the division was evident in angry words and many tears, praying the Lord's Prayer together reminded us of the values we share as followers of Jesus Christ and held us together in the middle of our differences. So when I couldn't pray, when I couldn't pray in my own language, when I didn't want to pray with my church, the Lord's Prayer, the words Jesus taught us, held me up because I am a part of the community. I am not alone. We don't always have the words. We don't always understand all before us. We are divided. But God's vision for kingdom of heaven on earth speaks. It holds us together. As Martin Luther said, I know not the way that God leads me, but well do I know my guide. We know the kingdom because we know God. And together, we work for justice and mercy and deliverance as Jesus taught us to pray. Amen. Uh, during this week, we are inviting you to reflect on the Lord's Prayer on our social media pages. Your pastors will be providing a daily prayer as we look at portions of the Lord's Prayer together. So we invite you to connect with us during the week. I remind you that the gifts we receive in your tithes and your offerings today and during this week support our small group ministries for children, youth, and adults as we gather together. And we have several ways to give listed on the slide that you see before you. We hope that you'll support our mission to be the church as we gather, as we learn, as we serve together as a community. If you're not receiving our e-news every week, be sure to fill out a comment, a connect card so that we can give you information about the life of our church. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, when we feel far from you, when we feel far from realizing your kingdom on earth, bring us together as your community. Help us to lift each other up in these difficult times. Enable the gifts we receive to support our mission to share Christ with each other and with our neighbors. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sing every valley. Oh.
dreams of the ones who know mine. Oh, are we trees rising to? we go out to be the church so be the church this week bring someone a casserole show grace pray with people who don't have the words pray in the way that we are led by God's grace living out heaven on earth amen We lift up our hearts today. We give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing to give thanks to God who sent Jesus into the world to lead an ordinary life. But he did extraordinary things. He healed the sick. He ate with sinners. He included people 
who for a long time felt excluded from God's love and the community. On the night that he gave himself up for us, he took bread and he gave thanks to you. He broke the bread. He turned to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. It's been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup and again he gave thanks to you. He turned to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these mighty acts of Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered near and far and on the gifts before us that in the breaking of this bread and the drinking of this cup, we might be the body of Christ for the world. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through Christ, with Christ, in the unity of Christ's holy church, by the power of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now with confidence, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. So if you love God, or even if you just want to love God, you're welcome to receive this table and to receive God's grace today. This is the body of Christ. It's been given for you. This is the blood of Christ, and it's been shed for you. Take, eat, and drink. Let us pray. Enable these gifts, O God, to connect us to community across time and space and differences. As we take in your grace, help us to show that same grace to others. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. We hope to see you next week online at 9 o'clock and 11. Go in peace, friends.